All right, I'll start the other side. All right, sounds good. So first off, I'm handing out a sheet to you guys, which you can fill out along with the PowerPoint we're going to go over, which is the three laws. Markers can get put away, by the way. And there will be a few short video clips. They do not have any information in them, so just enjoy the video clips. And don't worry about trying to get it. And then one other thing, I switched up number five and six, so those two are out of order. So keep that in mind. So six is actually four, or five? Five and six, yep. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about just the three laws of motion that Newton came up with. We kind of reviewed them quickly in the vocabulary, but we're gonna look at them a little bit more in depth. So first off, this is Sir Isaac Newton. He is the one that came up with the three laws of motion. And he went to college and studied math, physics, and astronomy. He was extremely smart. And he, when he was studying, he kept a journal where he put all of his ideas and wrote them down. He liked his ideas of motion, and he named them the laws of motion. His ideas were so good that Queen Anne knighted him and I'm not exactly sure what knighting someone means. It's like you put a sword on their shoulder. Sir Isaac Newton, then, instead of just Isaac Newton. Elton John is also a really Sir Elton John. <laughs> so is Paul McCartney. The musician. Yep. From the Beatles. So the the so the 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 I don't know their shoulders. And then so. this yeah. became the foundation for modern science. And it actually revol revolutionized the way that we think about motion. So now I need you to look at your sheet because this will be the very first item on your sheet. You need to make sure that his name is down after that first question. Okay? All right. So then we're going to look at the first law. And the first law says, an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. An object in motion continues in motion with same speed and direction unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. This is also known as the law of inertia. So you may want to mention to them which numbers these kind of go with okay. on your sheet. I'm going to grab one of these. Yep. Right now we're in number three. And then does anyone remember what inertia is? We just had it on the, yep, in the back. Isn't it like, Yep, the yeah. tendency of it. Good job. So inertia is the tendency of an object to resist being moved, or if the object is moving, to resist a change in speed or direction, once again, until acted upon by an unbalanced force. And that should be number six. What? Mm -hmm. Number out of order. Yep. Yep, five and six were out of order. All right, this is Mr. Test Tube. Mr. Test Tube likes to go skateboarding on the weekends. And so Mr. Test Tube is skating along. And what this law tells us is that Mr. Test Tube should be able to keep skating without changing direction or changing speed unless acting upon by an unbalanced force. Does anyone see what the unbalanced force might be in this picture? Right here? Yeah, the rock. And it could be a second Yep. So Mr. Test Tube, he gets acted upon by that unbalanced force. He goes flying, and he breaks. What? So here's Mr. Test Tube in motion. I never liked him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here we're going to watch our first little clip. Remember, there's no notes from the videos, so you can just enjoy the video. Just watch. And... Before she goes on to the next page, she'll make sure you've got everything in the right places. Uh, hey, can you give me a hand? Nah. Oh, RJ, this sofa's heavy. Can you help me move it? I'm reading something. Can't we do it later? Man, talk about inertia. Inertia? What?
What do you mean? I'm just chilling. More like frozen in place. A perfect example, since inertia has to do with how things move. Or don't. It's Isaac Newton's first law of motion. The first part says that because of inertia, objects in motion will keep moving at the same speed in the same direction. Forever? Yep. Unless some force changes their motion. Come on. How can something keep moving forever? Well, think about Mia on her scooter. Once she starts rolling, she just keeps on going. Yeah, until she runs into some gravel or something. That's because gravel causes friction. It makes her slow down and stop. Yeah, but she would have stopped eventually. Not if there wasn't any friction or another force to stop her. That's the most important part of Newton's law. If Mia was zipping along in outer space where there's no friction, once she started moving, she wouldn't need another force or push to keep her moving. She'd just keep going at the same velocity forever. Velocity? Isn't that like speed? Well, speed and direction. Wow. Can you imagine Mia going straight out into space? <laughs> now that would be a trip. Speaking of trips, inertia is what makes you slide sideways when you're riding in a car that makes a sharp turn. Really? Oh, yeah. When you're driving along, even though you don't feel it, your body's moving as fast and in the same direction as the car. If the car turns fast, your body keeps moving in the direction you were going before the turn. So if you're turning left, you'll slide to the right. See? That's wild. I think I'm getting it. But what about the sofa? You said it has inertia, but how? It's standing still. Yeah, and so is the scooter after it stops. Lucky for us. Newton discovered that the same rules work for all objects. So part two of Newton's first law says that because of inertia, objects at rest will stay at rest unless a force makes them move. What kind of force? Well, Mia can push off with her foot to get enough force to start moving again. So how come you couldn't make the sofa move? Well, the heavier things are, the more inertia they have, and the harder it is to make them move. Hmm, that sofa is really heavy. Uh, that's why I needed your help? Yeah, I get you. So, let's go over this inertia thing again. I want to be sure I've got it. Newton's first law of motion says that because of inertia, objects in motion will keep moving at the same velocity. That's speed and direction. And objects at rest will stay at rest, unless a force changes things. Friction is one kind of force. It can make a moving object slow down or stop. Heavier objects are harder to move or stop because they have more inertia. Impressive, RJ. I think you got inertia down. Thanks. Now, how about I get over it and help you move that heavy thing? Well, I don't want to force you, but I'd love it. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so you guys should have one through four and six as well. Okay, so let's make sure that those are all filled in correctly then. Um, but break it. Break it. Is there something inside of the glass tube? All right, do we want to check and see what we have for number one? Yep. Anybody Sarah. have number one? Yep. Sir Isaac Newton. Perfect. He said, Sir Isaac Newton, if you couldn't hear him. How many laws of motion are there? Maddie? Three. Three, perfect. Another name for the first law of motion? Tell you? Inertia. Inertia, awesome. And then number four. Back corner. Oh, unbalanced. Yep, and how about the second blank? Uh, uh, unbalanced. Perfect. <laughs> All right, and then number six, because five and six are out of order. What is the tendency of an object to resist being moved, or if it is moving, to resist speed, change in speed and direction? Go ahead. Inertia. Inertia, perfect. Okay, wait, so four, both of them are unbalanced? Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. All right, so where we're going to leave off right now would be number five, and then we'll go on to seven. Kind of confusing, sorry. So you may want to circle five and six and just put an arrow showing that yeah. they should have been flip-flop. That would make... It will make more sense when you look your notes over again then. All right, so looking at Newton's second law, it says that acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. The greater the mass, the greater the amount of force needed. So that means more mass means more force needed to accelerate.
So this is Mr. Test Tube again. And he's showing us that it's a lot harder to try to move something with more mass, like a brick wall, ouch, than it is to kick something lighter that you're supposed to kick, like a soccer ball. And the second law also gives us an exact relationship between force, mass, and acceleration. So there we have number seven. Make sure to fill those in, force, mass, and acceleration. And this relationship can be described in the equation of F equals M times A. Who has a guess what F is? Right here? Force. Force, perfect. How about a guess of M? Who haven't I called on? Right here? Mass. Mass, awesome. What was mass again? Yep. Right. We're going for definitions here. In the back? Um, the or something. Perfect. All right, and what does the A stand for? Yep, right there. Acceleration. Acceleration, awesome. And that's number eight, so make sure you get those in there. Next, we're going to be looking at Mike here. Mike's having a bad day. He's trying to get to work, and his car broke down. And his car weighs 1,000 kilograms. It's out of gas, so he's trying to push the car to a gas station. So not only is he going to be late for work, he's going to be sweaty. And he makes the car go 0 0.05 meters per second squared. How much force is being applied by Mike onto the car? So we can work through this problem together. And we're going to be using the equation F equals M times A. And for you guys, I would put this, when you do the problem with her, put that information off to the right of number eight. Yeah, then you can have a little sample of how to do yep. it. So we're looking for force. So we don't know what force is. Can anyone tell me what the mass is? Yep. 1,000 kilograms. 1,000 kilograms. And then what was the acceleration? Oh, no? All right. 4.05 meters per second squared. Perfect. All right, so can someone help me set up this equation with these numbers? Maddie? 1,000 kilograms times 0 0.09 meters per second squared. All right, and then has anyone solved that? Yep. 50. 50. And does anybody know what force Whoa. is measured in what unit? Newtons. Newtons. Good job. So you can write Newtons out, or what can you represent it by? What one letter? N. N? What type of N? Capital, Capital N. N. Yep. Yep. Awesome. So Mike is exerting 50 Newtons of force onto that car. All the way to the gas station. He's gonna be one tired dude. Yeah. Hey, my dad get that tired that fast. All right. So then we just kind of answered number nine there as well. So make sure you get that one in there, and we're gonna watch this second clip here.